folks. It's We'll See You in Hell. We're all back again. The old podcast you love. It's brought to you by the Fangoria Podcast Network. You want some info on the network? Maybe this program, other programs, We'll See You in Hell. Find uh, old episodes. Go visit Fangoria.com. Pat, the magic's gone with this intro. I can't read this goddamn thing anymore. It wasn't, you, uh, wasn't great. No. Can you start reading it? For a little while. I think the people want that, and I was waiting for you to extend that <laughs> offer to me, as I think we all were. I, uh, it's forced. It's it's desperate a little bit. Yeah, I feel like I'm in the, in the tail end of a six-month run yeah. of uh, Oklahoma. <laughs> like, we're just, you know, it's yeah. the matinee show. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. There's a soft golden haze on the meadow. That's the first song from Oklahoma, which Joe is apparently unfamiliar with, despite I, uh, making the reference. I don't know any of the songs. I was in Oklahoma in high school, and I was great, frankly. I was in o- Oklahoma last week Okay. at the Ha Ha. See, I was doing a location joke. Yeah. I also portrayed Danny Zuko in Greece. How? Well, very well. I mean, you couldn't resemble an Italian less. You know, uh, it's Missouri High School. Like, it's not like we had like a, a melting pot. Uh, Why? Well, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, I also portrayed uh, Miss Rosa Parks in the Rosa Parks story. <laughs> sure. I refused to move to the back of the bus uh, in a very tasteful sure. blackface. Sure. Sure. Uh, no, that's not true. But I played the Tin Man. I, I was quite a performer. I played the the juror in Twelve Angry Men, who's like, "Yeah, bunch of idiots." The, the one that's like, one. my son hates me. Yeah, at the yeah, end, yeah. yeah. You, in high school, you played this role. That's right. It's pretty heavy for a high school play. Look, I, I, w- I was a thespian. And that's what you want, folks, is, w- is uh, for your principal to announce loudly over the intercom while you're amongst your peers and being bullied every day that you're a new addition to the International Thespian Society. Well, Because it, I don't know if you're picking up on it, but it sounds a good deal like lesbian. I tell you, my classmates definitely picked up on. That's an old Golden Girls routine. What? That thespian sounds like yeah. lesbian. Yeah. Yeah. And they, well, wait, no, Lebanese. That's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. Lebanese Rose. Lebanese. Oh, yeah, Lebanese. <laughs> the uh, I just love. You know, just when I thought I couldn't be more impressed by my buddy Pat Walsh, find out he's covering roles that were portrayed from everybody from Travolta to Vic Tabak <laughs> on the stage. That's very uh, impressive to me. That's right, a wide range. I didn't actually play Rosa Parks. I feel like I need to be no, I know. Vic- overly sensitive today because I, I was called a racist twice today. <laughs> uh, I, and both I find equally ludicrous. Um, the first was, of course, on Twitter, where even though I do shit on Trump pretty regularly, no one's. I never brought out that real awful element you know the whole other half of twitter uh until today when i i tweeted which i think is a decent joke ben carson as the head of housing and urban development what was godzilla unavailable (laughs) because godzilla destroys houses and cities right right i thought it was a very clear joke and this guy i didn't uh, even pick up on that part i just that's a layered joke i just thought because he's a monster and I oh. thought it was very funny. Oh, okay. Well, but I'm no. impressed at the layering uh, with the destroying of houses and cities. Oh, I guess it, maybe it wasn't clear. Maybe I should clarify it. Well, look. How I, somebody else took it on the right was that I was racist because uh, Ben Carson is black and I guess so is Godzilla, except Godzilla's green. Sure. Um, or maybe he thinks that dinosaur is a race I, I i didn't know but once he did it 10 other guys were like you racist etc cetera, etc cetera. well here's the thing is uh and i've noticed this people that really are that are really into the extreme right the way they react to the pc police on the extreme left is they start to call you racist ironically you think they were doing it ironically yeah they do it to be like how dare you you racist you okay. criticize the black person I'd buy that's, that. That's usually what they're doing. And then they try to, they, you know, they do want to, a lot of the time, harm you right. with the words, but they're doing it under that guise usually. Well, I mean, any time you're called a racist, which I, I have been twice, I think, in my life, both this week uh, affected me. The other was from a, a big fan of this podcast who 
tweets at us 10, 12 times every time we do a podcast. She's usually very delightful, a young African-American lady. And uh, in the midst of like 10 great tweets about loving the show, and this was funny and that was funny, and um, she said, we really do need to talk about Patrick's uh, hatred of all black leads in movies. Why Pat doesn't like black actors. (laughs) I didn't see that. (laughs) And I I stared at this for an hour, and I was just like, I'm not going to respond. Because I I feel like on Twitter, if you respond to someone calling you racist, whether people want to or not, you're scrolling through on the toilet, you associate me with racism, kind of. If if, if I'm suddenly engaging and defending myself against being a racist, I was like, I'm just going to let it go. The girl's clearly not out to get me. And and I I thank her for being a fan. But uh, I kept thinking about it, and I was like, we've talked about so many movies i've shat on so many actors so many movies all i remember doing is i think it's on one that hasn't aired yet but last week we recorded two i talked about how charming and delightful denzel washington was but that hasn't aired yet and i was maybe the only person in the world to support tyler perry's boo medea <laughs> halloween that's, journey that's what i was going to say i mean if anything proves that pat walsh isn't racist he had the audacity <laughs> to say boo a medea halloween yeah Not, did, would you just call it a Halloween journey? Halloween Medea journey. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the, he had the audacity to, to, to defend that film. Uh, so I was baffled, and, I, and I, I could see if like somebody was going through all our old archives and was like, I said something that could be construed as racist. I would believe that. I'd be like, oh, yeah, I mean, I, we'd, we'd done so many of these and drunk, and maybe something came off wrong or whatever. But to say like your, your problem is you don't like any black male actors, I'm baffled by that because I can't I've, think of any black male actor I've shat on on the show. Neither can I right now. Not a single one. Um, I, I can't either. Maybe she was just joking and it didn't land. You know, that I can sent happen. you uh, that can happen without getting too into details. I sent you some texts a friend was sending to me the other day, and I said, "Pet, this person is this person crazy or what? Like, look at these texts." And I said, and "Yes, you, she is." And you said, "Yeah, but she's trying to be funny right now." Yeah, is uh, what, you, is you, what you said. You said st- you're, you said what's happening is she's trying to be funny. It's not landing, and you're taking it literally. So maybe that's what happened with the tweet. Maybe she's just trying to be funny. It didn't land right. In that thing. case, I think it was a, a crazy person trying to be funny, which is a very hard thing to follow. Well, let's not start calling the fans crazy. No, I'm, that's not I'm, gonna... I'm talking about your person. Oh, oh, oh. Now I'm going to talk about, okay, so this tweet, and the, the young lady's name is Chanel. I won't say her last name because I don't want people to talk to her and harass her. She looks lovely as a, as a child in her photo, or perhaps just a, a young a young boy who's a friend. I don't know. <laughs> she says uh, we really need to talk about how no black male entertainers impress you. Then there's this uh, frowny face, and then it does say "lol." Frankly, yeah, maybe she's just maybe she's talking about me because I really went hard on Tyler Perry. Ma- maybe, maybe, but like uh, I I, w- I was very confused. And and black male entertainers and I don't think I've talked about any black male entertainer in a negative way. Medea is really stuck in my head right now. I can't really think of. I loved it. I, I mean, I I just uh, booked tickets to see the weekend on November or uh, January third, December thirtieth. So what are you seeing? The weekend. Oh, the musician got a poster up of him in my home. I swear to God, I thought you meant Tyler Perry was doing a play with Medea and it called The Weekend and you were <laughs> going to go see it down no. at Paramount or whatever. I mean, I'm not going to be the guy who starts listing off all the all the black entertainers I like and my my black friends. But I was I was shooken up. Uh, I love uh, all entertainers, particularly black entertainers. I don't think you're defending yourself hard enough right now. The extremely sexual music of The Weekend brought my girlfriend and I together. <laughs> Honestly, it was the first show we ever saw. We sat in the front row before it's, he was famous. We all know you're not a racist. Now Pat. we're going to see him on New Year's. This man played, a, Vegas played a slick, slick haired ginger Danny Zuko. <laughs> any racist yeah. would have any racist would have spat at the idea of playing an Italian man uh, as a redhead. I don't I don't see uh, see race, frankly. Yeah. Well, there you go. I, look, did you see? Oh, no. Trust, now here's what I did. And this I know this hasn't aired yet. Um, cause we did two. So sometimes you get confused which one's aired and which hasn't, but in the, in the one that's coming up, we discussed how, oh no, we did. This was the Kilborn one. I discussed how I don't like Trevor Noah. Oh, maybe that's what she's referring and to. And you agreed that you don't like Trevor Noah, but I got, I just got singled out for some reason. Now, since then that amazing Trevor Noah interview with that Tommy, uh, Fox news bitch aired. 
and he eviscerated her for 30 minutes. I watched this interview, and I was like, what an incredible interview this is. And I, I loved that. But, you know, night, night by night, I don't think Ter- Trevor Noah is hilarious. Also, I, I don't know if you could find a, a whiter <laughs> black man. <laughs> now, that's probably racist. <laughs> I don't know, people. <laughs> Listen, man, you're you're really on pins and needles today, man. Well, I think th- look, it happens. Trust me, I've been at the receiving end of a lot of a lot a lot of Twitter hate uh, sure, over the years. Sure, it's sure. it's people say thing, and I've had people actively try to destroy me. No, I know. Like I, I know. was some sort of evil like business landowner or something. Right. Like you know, so I, I wouldn't worry <laughs> about it. I think she was just having a little fun. She was, and th- th- now that I see the smiley face, I, I don't know why I overreacted. You didn't overreact. You got a little rattled, and and that's that's part of life, you know. I just know that that's not that's not what's in my heart. Isn't that what Michael Richards said on uh, when they brought him well, on Letterman in the most awkward interview of all the, time? Yeah, I'd, I'd say the more you talk about it, the the deeper a hole <laughs> will get. I just I'd like to to dig into shit that, that's a little uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, I had a situation the other night because I said uh, on stage at my, you know, we do this hip-hop comedy show called can i kick it and at the top of the show i said how i didn't vote and that's not a i've learned not a great thing to say in front of an la audience they're not stop uh, right there they're not very uh what's what's wrong with you there's nothing wrong with me what's right with me is what you should be asking what's wrong with all of you no i look at what you've all done i know that you did (laughs) look at what you've all done please do not include me on that uh but i know i know you didn't vote i don't agree with it my uh, my go to statement is, uh, n- you know. Not voting is like not applauding at a concert. It makes no difference, but I do it because I'm not an asshole. That's how I feel about well, that's a terrible reason to vote. Um, maybe it is. But I don't I think people would say that that you vote to, you know, people fought for your right, et cetera, et cetera. You if you don't vote fine. And I think I think probably some of these people who are going over the top about voting, maybe some of them didn't make it to the polls either, but just like to talk about shit. But when Joe says on Twitter the other day, I didn't vote, blah, blah, blah and then is texting me like, why are people upset? No, with that's me? not what I did. That's not what I did. Let's not let's not contort you history were, here. The gist of it was. No, the, this was people are. No, upset no, 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 no. I made a point with the statement. I didn't tweet. Hey, I don't vote. Come at me. I didn't write that. What I said, you might as well have. No. What I said was I get shit for not voting. But what I've learned is when people are angry that you didn't vote, they're angry that you didn't vote for who they wanted you to vote for. Nobody ever says thank you for at least voting for the enemy. That's a very valid point. That's a valid point that I think. And I was absolutely right in the response it got because the response it got was. Everybody that loves Hillary being mad that I didn't vote for Hillary. Yeah. And then people on the left who I'm friends with who didn't like Hillary and were mad at the left because of what they did, what they allegedly did to Bernie Sanders, then texting me and saying and, and then defending me on Twitter and saying you're getting bullied by Hillary supporters right now, which is exactly what happened. That is. And, exactly I, what and happened. I also will take umbrage with this. I will also take umbrage with this. If we're. I consider myself a progressive. Uh, I do, honestly. I think that I'm a pretty open-minded and, and liberally-minded person. Uh, I don't vote. I don't subscribe to either, either party. I have never voted. Uh, but it bothers me when the team that waves the progressive flag the hardest starts coming down on you because you didn't do it the way they wanted you to do it or the way they think you need to do it, I think is kind of bullshit. And I saw it a lot when people were being chastised because they supported Jill Stein, people were being chastised because they supported that other third party guy. People His were being, name is Gary Johnson. Gary Johnson, excuse me. People were being chastised because they liked Bernie. Bernie himself was chastised. And really what it came down to was we've now muscled in this candidate, which is fine. I don't give a shit what you think about Hillary Clinton or not. But then don't tell me that I'm a fucking asshole. Because you you shove me into the ring of something and go you now now participate no I don't I don't have to do that and I happen to truly believe that not voting and people bucking the system and giving the middle finger up will 
potentially cha- could potentially change things. I don't believe that playing ball as we always have all the time is doing a goddamn thing because every eight years, half of this country is telling me that our country is over and it's the worst it's ever been. It happened at the beginning of the W. Bush administration. It happened at the beginning of the Obama administration. It's happening now again with Trump. The things people were saying to me about Trump, who I think is a douchebag, and I'm not happy about that guy being in office, but the stuff people are saying to me, I'm like, this is literally the same thing everybody was saying to me about Bush. And this is literally the same things I read liberal or, or conservative people saying about Obama. And you know what? My life hasn't changed that much since either of the presidencies were, were in, in the course of action and have ended. So do I think Trump's an idiot? Of course. Do I think he sucks? Of course. Do I like the guy? No. But am I going to get into a goddamn white knuckle panic and think that my world is going to end with a mushroom cloud tomorrow? No, I'm not doing that either. Sorry. No, that is not going to happen. Um, but I think things are going to get quite bad. I never heard anybody say that around the time of Obama. All I heard was hope. But then I wasn't living in, you know, racist uh, bumfuck town. Well, that's I, why I, that's why I say the things I read, because it was re, because I lived in New York when that happened and it was a very hopeful time or hopeful spirit in New York. But if you went online and read or if when I went home and talked to people in the neighborhood I grew up in, the older people, not people my age, but, you know, adults, maybe friends of the family, whatever. Dude, they were talking about Obama like you would have thought, goddamn. Uh, to take a line out of your book, Godzilla was in office. I was just like, <laughs> right. what the fuck? Right. So my point is, is I, I just refuse to play that game. Uh, I have no stake in any of this. I try to be a good person in the day to day. I try to love the people around me. Yes. I do think that but you're vote- not changing anything by not voting. I, that's that's absurd. I think if a lot of people didn't vote, and there there are a lot of people don't vote, there are, it doesn't matter. There are other believers in the movement out there. There is there there is support of a non-voting movement out there. That's and, that's not a movement. Well, that, why is that's it not doing a absolutely nothing? Because this is what the rules are. You 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 staying home and sleeping in does not change anything, nor will it. So then, if you were to if you were to go, you know, I, they I don't know. Protesting doesn't seem to do a great deal, except sometimes it does. Look at this uh, the Native American situation going on. Now. Uh, I don't. I'm not saying I I have gone to protests or anything either. Writing a, a letter to your congressman probably doesn't do much, but people do that. I'm just saying you saying I'm going to do nothing is certainly not going to change anything. I don't think it's doing nothing. I think it's saying it is doing nothing. I think it's saying your part because you're not actively going out and saying like trying to rally people to okay. as a non-voting uh, uh, then co- collective. Uh, then then w- and if I did, would I still be doing nothing? I no, still would be, be doing voting. something. I think it would be it would be probably a, a waste of time, like anything else. But. I just, I just, it just makes me laugh as a guy who uh, has, quite frankly, done a lot of news television over the years, and has very much slugged it out face to face with people like Ann Coulter on TV for my values, and been chastised regularly for them. For, for saying that I didn't believe in God and, uh, or, or I believed in certain female freedoms like abortion or whatever on channels like Fox News and then getting a shitload of stuff, sticking up for feminism, speaking out against racism, these things. I've actually done these things publicly. I've put my money where my mouth is for the things I believe in and I've paid the fucking price for it and I still haven't stopped. So it just kind of makes me laugh a little bit that in this one situation I go, hey, Actually, I don't vote, and I have a reason for not voting, and it's just it's an, it's an unspeakable offense to so many people I know. I think my, my point to you was you seemed bewildered at, at the anger that was coming to you. I was a little bewildered at the amount that, uh, that because I think if you're going to claim to be a progressive, you have to be open-minded to all types of progressive thought, not just your own. So when you attack sure. instead of trying to understand, now don't get me wrong, everybody that was on me apologized. I had other friends stick up for me. Right. It, was, it ended up being a very fruitful experience. But when the country is mourning, in a sense, I mean, you, you know, you, there's no jokes on Twitter anymore. It's essentially just... People, woe is me, the world is ending. Some doing something, some just simply tweeting that the world is ending and, and do, uh, they're doing nothing either. But you can't be surprised when you enter the fray three, four days after the election. You're like, I didn't vote, 
people, of course, are going to be upset with that because they feel like you're not with them. But that's I'm my not point. saying that's right or wrong. That's the point of the tweet. If you're going to announce I didn't vote, you can just not vote and, and that's it. But that's the point. That was the point of the tweet. You're not mad that I, when people when all those people reacted and said you're an asshole because you didn't vote. When I started to say, so let me get this straight. Had I voted for Trump, would you not be mad at me right now? And then the response to that was, bye. I'm right. not doing this. Sure. And they it's would, like they would be more mad at you if you voted for so Trump. Then that's the only point I'm trying voting. to make. That's for sure. Don't don't mask don't mask your recruitment as as uh, as as patriotism or something like that. Or you know, don't try to make it look like you're doing anything more than saying do what I want you to do right now. Sure. That's all that that is. I think if you had, which would have been perhaps more cowardly, if you had dropped I didn't vote from the start of that statement. You would have, I think, had a much more interesting conversation. I that did didn't drop that. Involve personal attacks with you. I no, did the tweet say. said I didn't vote, but had I not, you mean? Had I not, yeah. Oh, I thought you said had I. No. Well, yeah, if if you would drop that, then it, it becomes less personal and it becomes a statement you're making. Well, and if again, you're saying I didn't vote, you're gonna, ju- of course, you're gonna piss people off because everyone's like, it, it turned out to be, uh, although it, you know, nobody really seems to know what the actual results of this election were. Uh, it seemed to be a, a situation where it came down to a few votes in some places. California is never going to be one of those places, frankly. But it, it's it's hard for people to see not voting as anything other than uh, not giving a shit about this th- this right that many many countries wish they had was a right to a free well, election. That's, that's just that's just tough for those people, and they have to they have to be able to see past their own perspective. That's all. There are look. Sure. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this, and I am in no way comparing myself to Rosa Parks, okay? Oh, my God. I am in no way comparing myself to Rosa Parks. And it, well, just saying that, it, it seems like in a way you're about to. No. Go, go no. right ahead. But I, to, to use a very extreme example, you, you, look at any, you look at any person that's ever made a difference socially ever, it's never been met with open arms. It's been met with people completely chastising it. People who you think so, are on the right side of history, you not you it. not voting is not that. <laughs> it's Dude, not that there there are other people. We're all vote. We're, the the world is voting. Yeah. That, that's our system. Stupid. It doesn't work. Doesn't work. The okay. electoral college doesn't work. But you not voting will will not and cannot change that. That's if an you absurd. Can start thought. a movement of people not voting, and you get enough people not to vote. It could. It are you could. doing that? I've supported it online, but no, I don't do anything any more than you guys do. At the end of the day, it's, um, so, so, there's no difference between you and the, the guy and who's hung over and doesn't go vote. No, and you. There's no difference between me and you. Well, the difference is that I voted. We're ourselves in different... Big deal. Didn't do anything. Didn't do anything. No, All that's that correct. hope you felt when and you I pulled that And I sat here on this couch and said I knew it wouldn't do anything, and then I thought Trump was going to win. I almost, you almost couldn't say Trump is going to win at my work without people yelling at me. I was like, he is, and he did. And and that's terrible. And while I may agree that it's sort of futile, I really have to take issue with you acting like you're some sort of social justice warrior by getting an extra hour of sleep. Never put that title on me. Whatever it is you think you're doing or starting a movement or effecting change like Miss Rosa Parks, which you just not As I said, I was using an extreme example. Yes. And my point is is if you want to be a group of open-minded people, don't act like the people throughout history who have oppressed anything that wasn't perfectly aligned with their way of thinking. That's a very fair point to make. I am not saying I am doing anything as important as Rosa Parks. I know that. That's absurd. I mean, there are the people who affected change and everyone thought they were crazy are are throwing, uh, you know, burning bricks into buildings and, and getting out there and like butting heads with people and stuff. Not voting is not that. It, it just isn't. Well, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I will tell you this. That's what uh, you need is more coffee. I'll tell you this. When I was on, I just remember pouring himself a cup of coffee. I remember folks. time being on uh, uh, Fox News and the thing about West, uh, the former general, Army General West, when he after he left the chambers, I forget who the female senator was, but she criticized a bill that she was opposing he then wrote her a letter that said you didn't act ladylike yeah yeah, yeah you know it was that. a really like demeaning sexist thing we talked about it on fox news i said on fox news i'll tell you who's acting ladylike is west because he's being a little bitch right now i had people telling me that they were going to come to my show and punch me in the face sure for insulting and you know what the response was you know what the response was from my open-minded friends 
Why did you say anything? Why say it? Why say it? You know those people will react that way. Right. Funny enough, now all my open-minded friends are saying the same thing, uh, and the, but as many of them act just like those people did, with venom, with, with, with a, a blind attacks, and, and once again, it boils down to, why did you say anything? Why do you have to say anything? Well, let me ask you this. If we live in a world where half the shit you say is going to piss off the right, so you shouldn't say that, the other half of shit you say is going to piss off the left, so you shouldn't say that, you can't even tweet something without getting jumped on. What you fucking can't compare difference, Ben Carson to Godzilla anymore. What fucking difference is anybody really going to make? Doesn't it just kind of seem like this thing works the way it's going to work and that every eight years or so the pendulum swings hard in one direction and then it swings hard back in the other direction. We go from panic, panic, panic and consume to relax, everything's good, but still keep consuming. It's a fucking farce to me. It's a farce. I don't think that anybody from Trump to Obama to Clinton to, 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 to fucking Abraham Lincoln was going to get anything really done when they stepped into office because the powers that be will not allow it, and we've seen that. Well, Abraham over Lincoln and over freed again. the slaves, Joe, and then he was murdered immediately after. <laughs> yeah, but he freed the slaves. So don't you think that they're, you know, th doesn't it seem suspicious to you? I mean, you can't say Abraham Lincoln did nothing. I'm not saying he did nothing. You're a very passionate speaker, so sometimes it's hard to not go. No, that's crazy. But it's sometimes you have to. Whether you're talking about Doc Strange, MD. Or uh, or comparing yourself you don't to think Rosa it's, Parks. You don't think it's strange that our most progressive voices in America have all been silenced, have all been assassinated? You think that's just a coincidence? Of Malcolm X, I don't. Martin Luther King, but the those, Kennedys. But those people, the Kennedys, by the way, who were scumbags, uh, but <laughs> but progressives politically. At least. What show are we doing here? We're just talking politics. All right. Can we not talk politics? We can talk politics, but I mean, I, I, I see this. I see this getting further and further carried away. Well, it can get carried away. I know. I mean, how much do people really want to hear about lights out? We'll get to it. Yeah, we'll get to it. It lights just bothers out. me when people that defend so vehemently defend free speech tell me I shouldn't say certain things. That bothers me. No, I didn't I'm say saying, anything hateful. I'm saying because I've been on the receiving end of, of several texts where you're upset that people are upset. I'm, I'm saying annoyed. if you don't want people to be upset, don't say the thing. You can't stroll out into the public forum of Twitter with all your followers and say you didn't vote and be surprised when people are upset by that. I'm, I'm not surprised that people get upset by that. What I'm surprised by are the types of people that get upset by that. Sure. When if you say to me, Pat, if you say to me, hey, man, I got a real open mind, dude. Like, I'm just like all that hate shit out there, all that bullshit, all that discrimination. I'm not with that, dude. I'm not I'm not that dude. And then I go, Pat, that's great. Can I tell you something? I love Jesus Christ. And then you turn around and go, oh, you're a fucking idiot. Really? The fucking Catholic. And it's like, dude, you just told me sure that you're open minded. And I trusted that. And whatever. Now, I'm not saying everybody on Twitter is open minded, but I'm just saying the people I got shit from. We're, right. we're open minded. And again, it's all settled, but it does kind of it's but now, an interesting thing to talk about. Just because, you know, I'm pretty apathetic to all this shit anyway. We're, we're probably not that far d divided from each other, except I voted and you didn't. That's not that big of a difference at the end of the day. But let me ask you, if you said I'm open minded, you can you can say anything to me. I'm open minded. And I say, well, I fuck my dog. Right. Then can the person be outraged just out of curiosity? Are you supposed to be like, yeah, cool, man? Well, I would say that's illegal, so you shouldn't do that. Okay. All right. Now, maybe somewhere down the road, the pets get those brain helmets. They start talking. They <laughs> yeah. say, we want you to fuck us. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But I'd say outside of, outside of things that are not hurtful, and, I, and, and, then, and here's why I could theoretically pass some judgment on that. Pat, we have no idea if your dog wants you to fuck it or not. You might be hurting your dog, at least well, emotionally. I tell you, if if you've fucked your dog in front of a mirror, as I have, and seen that face, that ecstatic face, as I thrust away, <laughs> I don't have a dog, folks. You um, have a cat. I do have a cat. And the only reason it hasn't been fucked is it's too, <laughs> Actually, it's too spry. Is that the word? Yeah, too spry. Uh, the cat, the, it's very weird. The second my girlfriend goes to bed, the cat jumps onto my chest and it sits there until I go to bed. Like, it waits for her to go to bed, then it's like, now 
you and I can have our well, time. Well, it's waiting to steal your breath, and obviously. It's, it's a female cat, and it stares in the... I'm, I'm always very uncomfortable with extreme eye contact. It stares at me in the eyes until I look away. I'm like, that's enough. Then it'll reach out with a paw and caress my face, and I start to feel like, is this cat putting the moves on me? I get uncomfortable every night with this cat, and I don't know what to do about it. It's, I'm it's, not going to fuck the cat, folks. That's not where this is going. It's you know to bring it back to politics for a second. I cat, thought I was. I, this is a political. Concept. Cats are Clinton. Dogs are Trump. Okay, Tr- Trump is a big dumb dog. That's fair. Who sometimes is kind of playful. Yeah, but it bites the shit out of people, and you're like, we can't put this. This dog <laughs> can't be near anybody. Yeah, you got to just put it in the other room and just let it be a dog. Clinton's like a cat. You're not going to get too much trouble out of her. Yeah. She's going to do her shit behind the couch, but and you she's can, fucking you can, creepy and weird and cold, and it freaks you out. And you can break her again and again, and she just keeps coming back for more. Dogs get their feelings hurt, and then they, they tweet all night about Saturday Night Live when they're That's supposed a great to be running the fucking country. Yeah. So at, in conclusion, this is how we're going to wrap our political discussion. Hillary Clinton is cats. <laughs> Donald Trump is dogs. And Ben Carson is Godzilla. <laughs> now let's talk about Lights Out. All right. Um, I know you hated this. No, movie. we, we got to do your movie corner first. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I like uh, this. Here's how this podcast is going to be like one of the old podcasts where at the end we're like, oh yeah, yeah, we were talking about Lights Out. By the way, uh, we didn't like it. Look, Lights Out. That's we, fine. We, 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 I, I, I don't feel like we're, there's not going to be a ton to say. So. Yeah, the movie's 80 minutes. I, I don't have much to say about it. But uh, my movie roundup. I saw. Uh, Jesus, what did I see last night for Christ? I saw The Edge of Seventeen. I heard it's fantastic. Folks, it's fantastic. You, I, I sit around personally wondering why those old 80s... There was a teen movie every week in the 80s. John Hughes, of course, being my favorite. Then the 90s brought us another great run. For, of course, American Pie and those. But there's lots of other better shit down the way. Uh, you know, going down to like Ghost World if you want to get real artsy. Sure. But even more mainstream shit that I think was really great. Josie and the Pussycats is a genius satire of teenagers, I think. Um, Edge of 17, is, it would have fit right in to one of those late 90s classics, uh, one of those John Hughes types movies. It's fantastic. The writing is fantastic. It's okay. very funny. Uh, there's a, a guy who's really in love with her at school, who's one of the most realistic dorks since, like, the Anthony Michael Hall days. Beautiful. It's this Asian kid. Uh, I really wish I knew the actor's name because he was so fucking funny. Um, Like, everything he did, things that lines that weren't laugh lines were cracking the audience up because it felt real. And I knew the movie was produced by James L. Brooks. It felt a lot like his old classic shit, a lot of, like, old Cameron Crowe shit, where every moment feels so real that you're just laughing because you're like, I've been that person. I recognize that. It was great. great. Um, What else did I see? I saw Army of One, which is a Nicolas Cage movie. Oh, man, I want to see that so bad. That's out? Uh, Yeah, he plays the guy, a guy who, basically a crazy middle-aged guy who who God spoke to him, and he decides he's going to kill Osama bin Laden. God is played by Russell Brand in a very strange bit of casting. And, folks, I've loved Nicolas Cage in everything, the good shit and the bad. He was just ridiculous in this movie. That's why I can't wait to see it. He lo- then, it looks like he's off his rocker. In well, it. they show you the real guy, and he seems a little kooky. But for Nicolas Cage, they're, they're like, you won't be able to tell the two of them apart. You will. Like, he could have <laughs> played this guy kooky, and it would have been great. But he went so insanely over the top that I didn't even know what I was watching. And the movie is just stupid. It's Larry Charles, the guy who did Borat and Bruno and Seinfeld and Kermit Enthusiasm. And I expected it to be a really great comedy. And it just was not. It was okay. a, a pretty damn bad movie, I, I'm sad to say. All right. I'm still pushing Bad Santa 2 off for our Christmas episode. I have a story to tell about that. Okay. You can wait. Um... I saw L, which is the new Paul Verhoeven movie. Verhoeven did, you know, Basic Instinct, uh, Showgirls. Now, is there any clam in this one? 
There is. Because that guy loves showing clam. There, there's nudity in it. Uh, it's a French movie. It's Isabelle Huppert, one of the most beautiful women in the world. She's in it, probably 50, 60 years old. Movie opens uh, with a home invasion. Uh-huh. She is brutally attacked and raped by her invader. Yeah. He leaves. Huppert stands up very calmly, goes, gets into the bathtub. She's got bubbles all over her. And then blood rises up in the bubbles from her vaginal area. Right. Which is a very haunting and disturbing image that I have not been able to shake. And then the projector broke. And that was it. I was seeing an Academy Awards screening of it. They come in. They're like, folks, we're so sorry. The projector broke. We're going to have to start it again. So for a second time, (laughs) this audience in this tiny very like close to each other theater sure has to watch this woman be brutally assaulted and raped and then the blood rise from her vagina into the bubbles oh god that is terrible and then folks the framing was off the subtitles were out of frame so her son comes in starts talking to her you can't see the subtitles because they're out of frame once they re-spliced it they set it up wrong oh god so folks we watched her get raped a third time so at that point, it's hard to necessarily say what I thought about the movie because I felt like I was in Clockwork Orange with my eyes taped open. But uh, it was a very interesting movie, like all Verhoeven movies. Sorry, folks, Joe's texting. I'm not texting. With the sound on. I'm not texting. I'm trying to look. For I'm some trying reason. to find my review for later while you talk. It's called fucking double du- uh, double duty over oh, here. I'm listening probably, to you. Probably could have done it before or at least turned the sound off. Sorry. Though. Sorry. Maybe I could have done it in the 30 minute late window waiting yeah, you for could. you. I tell the, Joe, I'll be over when I get off of work. I don't know when I get off of work. I don't I don't have I don't work at a coal mine where I punch out at 5. You said you said I'll see you at 6:20, which was fine and it was fine that you were late. But here's what Pat does everybody. He doesn't text you at 6 to be like, hey, I'm going to be late. He waits till 6.25. Because I still thought I'd be out at 6. Sends the text at 6.25. Hey, dude, I'm still here. Sorry. Send it at 6 and say, hey, dude, I'm going to be late. Because I didn't know. We're supposed to be out at 6. At 6, you know. You're you're not out. Yeah, but I thought it was going to be a minute. And then I thought, well, I can get there in probably 10, 15. I told him 20. I can make this work. Then you start to realize you're not going to make it. You're not going to be five minutes, which is an understandable level of lateness. You got to text and say, I'm going to be a little later. Yeah. All right. Well, look, just, Jesus d- 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 just, just look, stay out of my lane. I'll stay out of yours. All right. I'd happily stay out of your lane if you weren't loudly making noise on your phone while I'm it talking about a woman being brutally ignore raped. Ignore it. Telling it's... a funny story about how we had to watch this three I, times. Did, did I not laugh at the start over? Did, oh, I, yeah. not, did, did yeah. I not go, oh, God, oh. that the, yeah. the subtitles were out of frame? Jesus Christ. How folks. was the movie? Uh, it's not amazing, but it was very thought provoking and interesting because she seems sort of indifferent to being raped. And the whole time you're like, what's going on here? And it's very uncomfortable. I liked that level of discomfort and it it led to a lot of conversation after the film. Okay. Jesus Christ. All right. You happy? No, you know, I'm not happy. Why? What is the matter? Uh, You come over here. You take, (laughs) you take all the troubles of the office out on me. There's no troubles in the office. I'm not. I'm we not, just stayed 20 minutes later than I expected. I'm to. not your job, okay? <laughs> I'm your partner, and I I want some. Uh, yes. I want my own pat time. Yeah. Okay. I don't want leftovers. You're getting it. You're getting it. <laughs> which, which, which? Well, I'd like I'd like a man who looks me in the eye and isn't over there on his goddamn phone. I was just trying to find the review that because I accidentally closed the window and I didn't want to stumble to find it later. And then as I was doing it, the phone rang and I didn't realize the ringer was on. And that was the noise you heard. All right. That's all. That's all it was. All right. God damn it. All right. Ooh. I've seen nothing. Oh, great. I- <laughs> that's that's great. Well, I'm sorry. I haven't seen any movies since we last recorded. We recorded like three days ago. I know, but I, you know, I, I intentionally kind of split mine up because we also had a whole month uh, apart that you might have seen more than a, a movie, but I guess not. Sorry that I was running around the entire world trying to pay my rent, you know? That's I fine. didn't have time to go fuck around with a box of juji fruits, <laughs> okay? I've, I've got never the eaten juji fruits. James L. Brooks movie. Must be nice, Pat. It is nice. But some of us got to work for a living, you know? Yeah, I, I also work. The, uh, I was late this evening. I haven't seen any movies All since right. we last met. But that's why it's called Pat's 
movie corner. <laughs> well, pretend you saw the the last movie that I'm going to say, Magnificent Seven. Tell tell me tell me what I thought of Magnificent Seven. I know what you thought of it. Go on. Uh, the text that you sent me said, "Watching Magnificent Seven. Oof." Or yeah, it, that's exactly that what I thought it. about it. Oof. And I was popping off texts left and right. I didn't touch my phone during this Edge of Seventeen last night. I was so caught up in this teenager's life. And uh, Magnificent Seven, I'm like, I might as well have been playing fucking Screwed on my phone or whatever that game is. I heard it was a fun movie. I still haven't seen it. I wanted to see it. People really like it. And then a lot of people really hated it. And I'm in the later camp. It just, like, it fucking sucked. Like, I, I look forward to Westerns, and there was no fun in it. Uh-huh. Uh, D'Onofrio was great in it. Vincent D'Onofrio. He played a very weird kind of part. Okay. Everybody else, everything else, like it should have been one of those, like the Blues Brothers, where they're they're assembling the team, you know, and but everybody's that's what it was. Everybody's got their crazy. That's what it was, and yet it wasn't because nobody was interesting or fun or crazy or had any sort of personality I'm characteristics just, at all. I'm just going to throw this out there. Yeah, uh, I'm 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 predicting that Chris Pratt is going to be our next Sam uh, Worthington, as in. Oh, I think you're wrong. As in, as hold on, can right. I finish the thought? Can I finish the thought? Sure. This may Says be the guy who yells at me for ten minutes about voting. This is this may be on how a it works. Podcast. Look, don't bring your boardroom office energy in here. This isn't a pissing contest in here. Okay, uh-huh. I know how it is on that lot. You guys fight. You're screaming at each other to get the best joke in. Not at all. I've heard many stories of Pat being heard through the windows on the lot screaming <laughs> how dare you fuck with my script I, th- these are things i hear uh folks that never happened no what i was going to say is uh i um i think uh sam worthington is a great actor but i think he, uh, uh, what the face he's average Chris pratt's not a great actor they, w- worthington is average at best pratt has charm to spare si- Sam Worthington has his career. He does his thing, and it's consistent, and it, there's a thing he does. He's serviceable, is what I would say. And Chris Pratt, Pratt's I find charming. the same way. He's a movie star. I find that if you take Chris Pratt out of being the smart-ass zinger man, it's pretty boring after a while. Yeah. So anyway. And whatever. even he was the smart-ass zinger man in this, of and course. it was pretty fucking boring. So my point is, is you got... Now, Guardians of the Galaxy was good, okay? He was perfectly cast, yes. Okay, great. We have yet to see what Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is going to bring. That's true. Jurassic World, Snooze. Yeah. Uh, apparently Magnificent Seven, Snooze. Yeah. He's got that new movie out with Jennifer Lawrence. The Billboard, I saw it. I, I almost fucking fell asleep at the <laughs> wheel. The goddamn thing it's looks so boring. It's just their two faces on a white background. Yeah, I mean, it's, so I think like he's the guy where it's like you're all supposed to love him and he's going to be in everything, but I don't think he's necessarily putting himself in the right stuff and yeah. making the right choices. And that's what happened with Sam Worthington. Sam Worthington yeah. was in everything for like a year and a half, every fucking blockbuster. And then they all weren't that great. And then that was kind of the end of it. But he was picking like man on uh, man on a ledge and shit that weren't blockbusters. He was picking like just bad movies. I'm sure Clash of the Titans probably seemed like a surefire bet. Maybe. Uh, Pratt, Pratt's been in hits. Terminator, and I think people like Terminator him. Salvation was, I mean, Christ almighty. He was probably sure. like, I made it. This is it. Sure. And, you know, I think a big part of why uh, certainly why I like Chris Pratt is that he used to be a big fat guy. I think that helps a lot. It's a it's a real rags to riches. I'll tell you what I don't. And like. he's and he's he's funny. He's I'll, not he's not even Ryan Reynolds funny, but he is funny. funny. He's funny. But I'll tell you what I don't like that. He's not a big fat guy anymore. Yeah. I don't like all these fat guys getting thin. And I've said it for years now. Yeah. Don't care for skinny Seth Rogen. I want him fat again. And I'm thrilled that Jonah Ray ballooned back up. Jonah, Jonah Hill. Or Hill, excuse me. Jonah <laughs> Ray is a comedian, a friend of ours. Yeah. Uh, I'm thrilled that Jonah Hill ballooned back up. I, well, I Jonah Hill my... gains and loses 100 pounds monthly. And uh, I, I'm sure he'd like you to think he's doing some sort of De Niro method acting he does. thing. He does. Well, I don't think he is. The, the fattest I've ever seen the lead in a movie, outside of maybe Orson Welles, was Jonah Hill in War Dogs. And I read some interview where he was like, yeah, I put on weight for the part. I looked up the actual man. The man is very normal size. <laughs> it's just a completely ludicrous thing to say. Oh, God. All right, and the look. thing is, Jonah Hill, he'll, he'll get a trainer and, and 
slim up, although he's never been slim. He was on his way when when he did twenty one Jump Street, the first one. Yeah, he, he was, and what's wasn't his in face. shape, but he was, you know. But him and what's his name, uh, Tanning Chatham, were on the cover of magazines together. Yes, and it wasn't, it wasn't like. You know, it wasn't like putting, a, you know, a fucking uh, Volkswagen buggy on the cover <laughs> next to twins. a Lamborghini. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was, God, my analogies are terrible anymore. I don't know where that was going. I, I stopped was it before I got a too A bad far. one and a good one. You know yeah. what I mean? They both look like handsome guys. And yeah, I was like, yeah. man, Jonah, Jonah Hill's really getting himself in shape. And that's when I said, I don't, I don't like this. Yeah. So I started to mail him cakes. Well, <laughs> well they always get him coming out of Froyo with... You know, if like at this point, I get Froyo once a year or something with my girlfriend, but they have the one size yeah. that everyone gets, the the normal size of Froyo, and then like the bucket that like you you assume is for a family, but Jonah Hill's always coming out of there with like a bag and two buckets in it. So he's a guy who just can't control himself, and I get it. We That's all rough. struggle. Yeah, it's it's like the Seinfeld episode when Newman's yeah. In, in the frozen yogurt place. Yeah, and just, you know it's just loaded with candy toppings. Yeah, and he's just he's not getting uh, kiwi. We got to get to this movie, Pat. All right, fine. We're 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 forty five minutes in. We haven't this even entire podcast about it yet. has been a, a tangent. Well, look, which I, I like. It's frankly. never not been that way. I almost said to you tonight after how, how long we talked about just Doctor Strange. I almost when I came in here was like, you know, we should allow it to be a little freer and go off on some tangents tonight because people like the tangents. Well, you got your wish, didn't this you? This has been all tangent. I didn't have to say a word. Yeah, lights I, out. I think it's been a tangerine dream personally. <laughs> That's just how I feel. Malibu That's, Nights, Tangerine Dreams. Lights Out is a movie about... Now, it's based on a short film that won a contest. Did you know that? I did. I haven't seen the film, but I did know that. The short film is like 45 seconds long or something. It's so short. Maybe it's two minutes, but it's really short. And it's scary as shit. And the, I believe the lady that plays the secretary at the beginning of Lights Out is the lady that stars in the short film. Okay. Um... But it's tremendous. It's terrifying. Very simple. They're in a, she's in a hallway in her house. She turns the lights out. You see the shadow. Turns it back on. It's gone. She it's keeps, basically the opening scene with the mannequin. Exactly. Okay. Uh, and then at the very end is the reveal of the monster. And yeah. it looks way scarier in the short than it does in the movie. Yeah. So then they take this. They say, we're going to make it into a full-length film. I was partially... Not even. I mean, it's, it's 79 minutes long. Yeah. I was partially excited when I heard it was coming out, uh, but I had a big part of me that was like, uh, this usually doesn't go well when they take something cool that's short yeah. and to the point and try to stretch it out. Um, but if you haven't seen the film, Lights Out is about a, a, a ghostly apparition, a, a demon-type being or something that only appears in the dark. It cannot go into the light. If it goes into the light, it gets like burned. It starts appearing to various members of this one family, and uh, and then we go from there. Right. What's going on here? Right. And um, of course, I was right. This is the first thing I'll say. They bring in the whole backstory of how the ghost came to be. And it's it's a real, real stupid backstory. It's terrible. And the the major undercurrent of the movie really is depression. And uh, the mom is very depressed. The daughter is acting all superior to her mom, but seems very depressed. The the son is depressed. It seems like the ten year old kid, and it's honestly a very depressing movie. Everybody seems down. The mom is played by Maria Bello, who's like not great in it. Also, too, I always have a problem with this. I have a big problem with this. Two things. Number one, Maria Bello, great actor. Yeah. I'm a fan. Yeah. She's clearly had plastic surgery. Please oh, okay. don't cast. You get all the plastic surgery you want, but you want me to believe that this woman is like a broken down suburban housewife. You can't have her obviously having had four fucking facelifts. It takes away from the believability. They did that in Insidious with Barbara Hershey. Barbara Hershey sure. has had a ton of work done. Fine, I don't care. But then don't cast her as like the fucking salt to the earth mom. Right. You know what I mean? It's her, like Hershey has f for sure. I didn't notice Maria Bella. I I, I tend to not notice that. Stuff, I think honestly. she's she's she looks like she's been pulled back a bit. All right, all right. Um. So that that kind of bugs me. This the other thing that really well, you bugged know in me, Hollywood you don't do it. They're all over you for looking old. You do do it. You're Renee Zellweger, and everybody's mad at you for doing it. I'm not saying anybody should or shouldn't do it. I'm yeah. just saying. If you're producing a movie where you want me to 
believe there's a depressed woman that lives in darkness. Yes. Don't <laughs> have her obviously have had plastic surgery. That's, That's fair. all. It's the, probably uh, just who they could get. You know, I guess she, she's not even a name, but I guess she's something of a name. She's a name. She was starting that. She was starring in that TV. She's a name for that kind of movie. Yeah, for sure. But uh, she's from my hometown. Do you know that? <laughs> I didn't, Joe. No, I'm serious. No, I didn't know that. Listen, I'm going to just throw this out there. Uh huh. Not a fan of this. <laughs> That's the second one you've done, and I, I, I don't care for. I didn't care for either of them. Uh, <laughs> how, how would I know that? I you, you and I are out, out for lunch, and we're talking about Maria Bello together. <laughs> yes. Uh, now here's the thing. The other thing that really annoyed me right off the bat in this picture, the daughter character. I forget the actor's name. She did a good job. She was convincing, but. Piper Johnson or something. Something. Tracy. But she plays. This is why I hated Mama. This was the only. Re this was not the only reason, but this was like the key reason I hated Mama. Yeah. I, Hollywood, please stop making main characters who are supposed to be like rock and rolly or gothy. Oh yeah. yeah because yeah. it is so fucking obvious that your costume designer goes to Hot Topic. Yeah. Buys three things and some candles that are black. And then goes, this is what a person <laughs> like this would be into. And it's like, no, that looks like the dorm room of the kid nobody wanted to hang out with when exactly. I was in college. It looks dated. It looks like there's black light posters in there. So they put a lava lamp up while you're at it. Let's also not forget her rocker boyfriend. Yeah. Just, whose only rocker characteristic was that he had long hair. And he had as long a hair as I did. It wasn't even that, that yeah. crazy. Yeah. So she's dating the supposedly like her wild. name is because we, we never seem more uh, incompetent than when we're like, eh, her name's Tracy Johnson or something. Well, let me tell you her name, Teresa Palmer. All right. You threw a piper out for her. I, did, I thought, you know, maybe she has a piper parable quality of Coyote Ugly fan. Um, the, the, the boyfriend is in the movie. Her boyfriend is supposed to be like this, like bad boy rocker type. Yet the first scene, like they have sex and she's like, all right, get out. Yeah. And he's like. All sensitive. It's, who's writing these characters? Yeah. This guy would be like. He's like, can I please leave a toothbrush here? Yeah. It's like, what, what is this written for? Yeah. Um, and she's telling him he's got to get out. I guess maybe they're trying to play. I guess play with the uh, stereotypes or something. But I get not. that they're trying to play up to yeah. define her as being the loner and emotionally shut off. But then don't have her date in a fucking rock and roll guy. Right. Have her date a nice guy. And. Yeah, yeah. Or Maybe make her predictable. make her like somebody who's obsessed with their job, who does really well at their company or something. Yeah. It doesn't, the characters, especially for a, a 79, 80 minute movie where you have plenty of time to develop these characters. The characters were beyond paper thin. You, at my problem with all this stuff, you didn't care about any of them. And uh, really, everyone being depressed in a movie makes the movie miserable to watch. So yes. it's a horror movie with no fun in it. The scare scenes, when they came, were effective. You know, I, I was never scared, but it, I thought they were done well. The The rules of the light thing seemed to kind of come and go. Right. Like, uh, okay, so w w at one point the, this hand reaches out, they shine a light on it, and the hand starts burning and sizzling. But then in the other scenes, they flash a light, and it disappears. So does yeah. light burn it and harm it, or does it make it disappear? Pick a lane. Yeah, that was another uh, another problem I had with it was the science of the film it just wasn't accurate. It was like here you've got a supernatural being that clearly has the ability to just go, I'm never going to be in the light ever if I <laughs> yeah. don't feel like it. Yeah. It can disappear and reappear at will. Yeah. Why would it ever walk into light? Why would it ever have to? It wouldn't. It wouldn't. It wouldn't. Go live in, in you know, go up to Alaska for solstice and get, yeah. you know. And the, the back story is, uh, you know, I guess spoiler alert is if you give a shit, that this was when the mom, when Maria Bello was in a mental hospital as a little girl, she befriended this other little girl who had, like, translucent skin and couldn't be exposed to light. Which is a real condition. I know. And they sell it so poorly in the movie. So poorly. That I, that I thought they made it up. They didn't even do, like, any really cool flashbacks with it that they no. easily could have done. No. Then, it's literally just they put a, like a shroud over a little kid. Yeah, and exactly. they're like, "Look, it can't be in the light." Yeah, it's terrible. Then uh, they do an experiment on the kid, which isn't really explained at all. Why? What this experiment experiment was, what it entailed, but they hit it with a lot of light, and she died. 
Then now the girl comes back to haunt Maria Bello, who didn't do the experiment. Why isn't she haunting the people who performed the experiment on her? This is this this also bothers me about horror when they do this, and I'm glad you brought it up. I can't stand these. This person was a was a pure soul that that got a bad run of luck, yeah. and now they're rotten and shitty because of it, and they try to kill people in the afterlife. Yeah. Wouldn't the pure soul? If this whole afterworld, afterlife thing exists, wouldn't the pure soul like go up to heaven where God would be like, <laughs> oh, my sweet child, I'm really sorry about what happened yeah. down there. Either go to heaven or go after the people who fucked you over, not your only friend when you were a freaky, uh, light-sensitive skin girl. Yeah, it's, it's a real shit show of a movie. And I was particularly angry because I was very excited to see it. Uh, it's got like a 73% or something right. on Rotten your, Tomatoes. Your favorite critic, uh, somehow, R- Richard Roper, Dick Roper, gave it a four out of four stars. I saw that. I, I mean, saw people that. love this movie, and it was a ma- I, I learned that worldwide this thing brought in almost $200 million. Did very well. and it's, On a $10 million budget, and, and kudos to it. I'll tell you why I was really mad. I was excited to see it, because any horror fan probably knows a horror movie getting like 70%. Any rating yeah. on Rotten Tomatoes, I add 20% to it for horror movies. Or comedies. Yeah, so I'm like, this thing is is a 90%. I got to right. see it. I was in a fucking hotel on the road. I rented the goddamn thing in the hotel. I paid twenty ninety nine to oh, see it. Oh, boy. twenty ninety nine to Ooh, see it. Ooh, that's tough. And and halfway through it, I was on my phone. I was so fucking bored. Yeah. I got room service. That was another 20 bucks easily. <laughs> that was, this fucking thing Plus put me in the whole tip. $50. Lights out on Joe's wallet that fateful night, folks. Am I oh, right? And then really, not wrong. The, the biggest issue with it, I'm just going to cut to the chase, and if you don't want to know the ending of Lights Out, don't, don't listen to this. The ending, I couldn't stand. Maria Bello, I'll cut to it, is, is shooting at the ghost, <laughs> and then surprised that it doesn't work. Her daughter is standing behind the ghost, and yet Maria Bello is shooting at the ghost, which right. I'm also kind of like, is the daughter didn't even react. Like, and ah. One key detail before you describe the ending yeah. that's important. Throughout the movie, the daughter is saying to the mom, you're crazy because you're not taking your pills. You're right. The mother refuses to take the pills. We find out later the reason she's not taking the pills is because she's scared of the demon, and when she takes the pills, it makes the demon go away because somehow Maria Bamford, or <laughs> Maria Bamford, Maria Bello being lucid uh, la- closes the door for the demon right. to come in. So she doesn't take the pills, and then we cut to the end of the movie, and she's shoot, trying to kill the ghost with a gun. Right. So she's on her. Pill. She does take a bunch of pills at the end of the movie, and it doesn't work this time. Also not explained. But I don't think she takes them. I think she's about to take them, and the ghost like attacks her. Oh, go- that's right. The ghost attacks. Yeah. So then she po- points the gun immediately. Like there's no build up, no suspense, no nothing. Points the gun at her head, and her daughter, who's watching this, goes, "Mom, what are you doing?" And she goes saving our lives in like this badass action movie voice yeah saving our lives terrible and then blows her brains out in front of her daughter <laughs> while her 10 year old kids outside horrified then she falls to the ground dead and the and the ghost goes away until lights out too but ba- let's take a look at what this movie's really saying because now I'm, I'm going back to my film school roots with the jeepers creepers and now this analyzing the shit out of these things this movie is saying the pills if you're depressed pills can make your demons go away but it's not a permanent fix yeah you're you're destroying your family's life with your depression right you're bumming everyone out you're ruining your children's lives and the only way to get rid of these demons is to kill yourself right hey are you depressed well right. guess what Everyone around you hates you because right. you're ruining their lives and being annoying by being depressed. So fucking kill yourself is the message of the sure, movie. Sure. It has to be. Death is the only escape. That is what it feels like. Death it? is the only escape. That and is. It, it wasn't like a hard R where you're like, wow, that's a fucking dark ending. It's PG-13. And then I, I read an interview with the director about this and he's like, oh, that's not what I intended. He's like, I just wanted her to be like a hero, you know, like where she... That's not what I intended. And he's like, actually, in Lights Out 2, I'm going to go into how um, the depression about their mom killing themselves makes the kids depressed, which brings the girl back. So he's just doubling down on it. Oh, God. So now they're going to be depressed, which will bring back the demons. Which Why will, would it bring the demon back? Which will bum out the people in their life. Why would they, why would they be fucking with her kids? She doesn't even know them. 
And I'll tell you, I've got a problem with any movie where the solution literally is, do me a favor, honey. Take the 10-year-old for the night. Uh, yeah. I'm going to play nice with the ghost. Yeah. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to go outside in the sun yeah. and just take my pills and we'll be fine. Yeah. That's literally what the solution could have been. Right. It was such a... Oh, fuck it. All right, Patty, we're out of time. Let's skip the movie review this week uh, because I can't find the goddamn one that I had and I thought it was going to be good. But two thumbs down. Yeah, two thumbs down. For Lights Out. Uh, Plug-wise, uh, you know, I don't have much going on right now. It's the holidays. Go read my uh, short stories, if you will. Some Severe Situations is the name of the column. It's on the Fangoria website. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, please. Uh, Joe DeRosa Comedy on both. Yeah, and uh, I have absolutely nothing. Uh, you know, tw uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, the Patrick Walsh. That's it. Butte. See you, everybody. This has been brought to you by the Fangoria Podcast Network. Uh, it's uh, executive produced by Thomas DeFeo uh, and produced by Ken Hanley. If you want some info about our show, advertising interests, that sort of thing, you email Ken, ken at fangoria.com.